Okay. Chapter 11. I was awakened by the waves dragging at my feet. Night had come, but being too tired to leave the sand pit, I crawled to a higher place where I would be safe from the tide and again went to sleep. In the morning, I found the canoe a short distance away. I took the baskets, my spear, and the bow and arrows and turned the canoe over so that the tides could not take it out to sea. I then climbed to the headland where I had lived before. I felt as if I had been gone a long time as I stood there looking down from the high rock. I was happy to be home. Everything that I saw, the otter plane and the kelp, the rings of foam around the rocks that guarded the harbor, the gulls flying, the tides moving past the sand pit, <clears throat> filled me with happiness. I was surprised that I felt this way. <clears throat> for it was only a short time ago that I had stood on the same rock and felt that I could not bear to live here another day. I looked out at the blue water stretching away and all the fear I had felt during the time of the voyage come back to me. On the morning I first sighted the island and it had seemed like a great fish sunning itself. I thought that someday I would make the canoe over and go out once more to look for the country that lay beyond the ocean. Now I knew that I would never go again. The island of the blue dolphins was my home. I had no other. It would be my home until the white men returned in their ship. But even if they came soon, before next summer, I could not live without a roof or a place to store my food. I would have to build a house. But where? That night I slept on the rock and the next day I began the search. The morning was clear, but to the north banks of clouds, or but to the north, banks of clouds hung low. Before long, they would move in across the island and behind them, many other storms were waiting. I had no time to waste. I needed a place that was shelter from the wind, not too far from Coral Cove and close to a good spring. There were two such places on the island, one on the headland and the other less than a league to the west. The headland seemed to be the more favorable of the two but since I had not been to the other for a long time, I decided to go there and make certain. The first thing I found, which I had forgotten, was that this place was near the wild dog's lair. As soon as I drew near to it, the leader came to the opening of the cave and watched me with his yellow eyes. If I built a hut where I would first have to kill, or if I built a hut here, I would first have to kill them and his pack, or pff, sorry. If I built a hut here, I would first have to kill him and his pack. I planned to do this anyway, but it would take much time. The spring was better than the one near the headland, being less brackish and having a steadier flow of water. Besides, it was much easier to reach, since it came from the side of the hill and not from a ravine as the other one did. It was also close to the cliff and a ridge of rocks which would shelter my house. The rocks were not so high as those on the headland and therefore would give me less protection from the wind, yet they were high enough and from them I could see the north coast and Coral Cove. The thing that made me decide on the place to build my house was the sea elephants. The cliffs here fell away easily to a wide shelf that was partly covered when the tide came in. It was a good place for, e for sea elephants because they could crawl halfway up the cliff if the day were stormy. On fair days, they could fish among the pools or lie on the rocks. The bull is very large and often weighs as much as 30 men. The cows are much smaller, but they make more noise than the bulls, screaming and barking through the whole day and sometimes at night. The babies are noisy too. On this morning, the tide was low and most of the animals were far out, just hundreds of specks against the waves. Yet the noise they made was deafening. I stayed there the rest of the day looking around and that night. At dawn, when the clamor started again, I left and went back to the headland. There was another place to the south where I could have built my house near the destroyed village of Glasset. But I did not want to go there because it would remind me of the people who were gone. Also, the wind blew strong in this place blowing against the dunes which cover the middle part of the island so that most of the time sand is moving everywhere. 
Rain fell that night and lasted for two days. I made a shelter of brush at the foot of a rock, which kept which kept off some of the water and ate the food I had stored in, a, in the basket. I could not build a fire because of the rain and I was very cold. On the third day, the rain ceased and I went out to look for things which I would need in building the house. I, likewa I likewise needed poles for a fence. I would soon kill the wild dogs, but there were many red foxes on the island. There were so, they were so numerous that I could never hope to get rid of them either by traps or with arrows. They were clever thieves, and nothing I stored would be safe until I had built a fence. The morning was fresh from the rain. The smell of the tide pools was strong. Sweet odors came from the wild grasses in the ravines and from the sand plants on the dunes. I sang as I went down the trail to the beach and along the beach to the sand pit. I felt that the day was an omen of good fortune. It was a good day to begin my new home.